long gone out of days of Gina Raimondo and the U.S. Congress saying that, oh, electric vehicles from China can spy. Oh, Huawei phones and Huawei 5G can spy on us. DJI drones can spy on us. That Apple versus Android battle has taken now a whole new definition. Today, we are waking up to this very frightened new reality. Mad leaders can actually blow up the devices they control. A series of unexplained explosions targeting members of Hezbollah militant group has rocked Lebanon in the last few days. The incidents, which began on Tuesday, September 17, have left multiple people dead and injured. Now, the first wave of explosion involved thousands of pagers, some of which, but not all, of course, were carried by Hezbollah members. Some were carried by civilians unrelated to the group. The devices detonated without warning, causing widespread panic and destruction, as well as the death of thousands of people, many of them innocent, even children, who just happened to be nearby. And the following day, similar incidents were reported involving walkie-talkies and other type of electronic devices. A new chapter in modern terrorism and warfare is unfolding before our eyes, one that we must all be aware of, and that is the topic of today's video. Hello, my name is Fernando and I'm a Colombian entrepreneur with 23 years of experience of life and work here in China. Now on my YouTube channel, I often ask questions that few people uh, dare to ask. And that is where we start today. Were there explosive in the devices? Now the establishment answer follows a standard, right? It reads that Lebanese authorities and international investigators, they are all scrambling to determine the cause of these explosions. Of course, both Hezbollah and Lebanese government have accused Israel of being behind the attacks, claiming that they are part of a broader conflict between the two countries. However, as always, <laughs> Israel has denied any involvement, and Washington also claimed it had nothing to do with it, which is a common practice when they are actually informed of an action, but want none of the heat when an Israeli special operation takes place. Watch here. Uh, certainly in keeping with that, I also did think the, the language from the White House spokeswoman, Karine Jean-Pierre, there was pretty telling. It seems like whenever there is an Israeli operation that Israel doesn't claim credit for, the U.S. always says it had nothing to do with it. It just feels like this sort of language that we've now heard so many times from them. But that is of no help. Here is where I begin to connect the dots and facts that might lead us to possible conclusions. So the first thing to say is that anyone alleging that these pagers, walkie-talkies, and other devices in Lebanon were outfitted with explosives, in my opinion, and you will probably agree with me after we finish with this topic, that's a cover story to try to make people believe that lithium-ion batteries themselves cannot explode. The fact is that they do indeed catch fire and can explode quite readily, which is exactly why it is illegal to ship lithium-ion battery items by air because they would catch fire, explode, and bring down an aircraft. Some people are connecting these pagers to a Taiwanese factory. However, I consider that another diversion. Just imagine for a moment the level of logistics and secrecy required in an operation where thousands of pagers, walkie-talkies, and other devices were rigged. I mean, were all these manufactured in the same factory? <laughs> I don't have the answer, you don't have it either, but that is unlikely. Now, how would the perpetrators know who to sell the pagers to? Are we to believe that Hezbollah members were shopping for communication devices all at the same shop in Beirut? Are we to think that this was a special bulk order from Hezbollah headquarters? Then, if that is so, how come some innocent children and people unrelated to Hezbollah ended up being hurt? But even if it were so, even if it were like a bulk order from Hezbollah headquarters, this would imply that someone within Hezbollah gave the perpetrators information about this and they gave them enough time to prepare the thousands of devices and also ensure they would be delivered on time from the moment that that order was placed. So my thought is that these were not rigged devices. I think you will all agree. It seems logistically impossible. However, the frightening thought now is, can the perpetrator send a signal to a device that will then cause a reaction 
that may then lead that device to explode? That, to me, seems a lot more likely and at the same time way, way more scary. In fact, something similar has already been done. Remember this clip from Marques Brownlee here? Apple just admitted it's been secretly throttling performance of old iPhones. Thoughts? Okay, so this was a really interesting uh, little, what would you call it? Controversy. But at the same time, now all of the headlines are, hey, Apple is actually pushing a software update to older iPhones to make it slow down. That's not a good look. I feel like they could have been a little more upfront and transparent about that before it had to be discovered with a Geekbench benchmark. Bottom line, I just think it's kind of a funny controversy. We all kind of suspected this to begin with, and now it's just confirmed true. I just wouldn't be surprised if Apple's not the only one here. So we know, we know that Apple has remotely manipulated obsolete batteries to down throttle and keep up with performance. What else could be done? Could those phones or those batteries be up-throttled? Could safety limits on temperatures be overridden remotely to allow them to just continue to heat up and then explode? Again, that is the level of paranoia that these attacks in Lebanon have started. Consider the following. What if you are carrying a phone? What if you're carrying now an explosive device? That's the question we must ask ourselves. And the question more concerning than any other question is, who controls the remote trigger? It's obviously not you. It has to be an entity, more likely a government. So let that sink in for a moment. Is it possible that you have become now a non-consenting government-controlled suicide bomber? That is the essence of terrorism, to create fear of everyday actions and activities, to shake the world into fearing one power, one entity, just like the U.S. did when it chose unnecessarily to detonate two nuclear bombs over Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And I insist this was unnecessarily. Just watch Nelson Mandela talk about it here. Those bombs were not aimed against the Japanese. They were aimed against the Soviet Union to say, look, this is the power that we have. If you dare oppose what we do, this is what is going to happen to you. So Hiroshima and Nagasaki were dropped simply to send a message to the world. This is the level of madness that we, the Americans, are capable of inflicting on anyone. Now, this event in Lebanon has inflicted such fear in people. Long gone are the days of Gina Raimondo and the U.S. Congress saying that, oh, electric vehicles from China can spy. Oh, Huawei phones and Huawei 5G can spy on us. DJI drones can spy on us. That Apple versus Android battle has taken now a whole new definition. Today, we are waking up to this very frightening new reality. Mad leaders can actually blow up the devices they control. I do not believe in the theory of rigged equipment. It's just logistics don't add up. If there has ever been a time to react as consumers and to protect ourselves, that time is now. The UN has done it with Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and now Israel has done it with electronic devices in Lebanon. Economic protectionism may not be the reason for ending globalization. The real reason for ending it and the real reason for the global south to stop consuming US-related products is now personal safety. If you learned something from today's video, please make sure to check this video right here, where I explain why US sanctions on Chinese EVs are just an excuse for losing competitive edge in car manufacturing, although, as we have seen in today's video, that's no longer relevant. All right, friends, take it easy, stay safe, and bye for now.